Hi, and welcome to Mr. Wilson Teaches Linoleum Printmaking Using Multiple Colors. Um, today I'm going to show you how to make a print using multiple colors um, in a linoleum relief printing. So the, the image that I'm starting with is this Pokemon here called Snorlax. So this is um, printed off online, but you can freehand something and do the same effect. And the final project looks very similar um, to this copy. So we're going to be trying to take this and make it into a, a handmade um, print. So some of the supplies you're going to need, you're obviously going to need paper, um, as well as your main image or a drawn image. Um, you're also going to need the linoleum. So this is a soft cut. Um, that means it's really easy to use the gouge and knife into, as well as cut. They make different types of rubber you can do this on. Um, technically, you can do relief into a lot of things, um, such as wood, plastic, uh, all different surfaces. But the one we're using is soft cut. Um, you need a piece of plastic that you're going to be inking on. Um, you can also use glass for this, or you can just use any surface really, just plastic is not absorbent, so that, that makes it a lot easier. Um, you're going to need printing inks. So these are the colors that I'm going to be using today for this, but obviously your image would dictate what colors you're going to be using. So I've got my blue, white, brown, and black. Um, you're going to need a brayer or a roller. These come in all different sizes, um, different textures as well. So these are a soft cut um, or soft rubber. I've got two different sizes, um, but anything really will work for this. Um, I use a bench hook. So this bench hook is for safety, um, so it hooks right onto your work area. Um, this isn't necessary to do the project, um, but I prefer to use this. So safety-wise, we're all covered. Um, you're going to need a Sharpie. Uh, that will come into play later when we start outlining the image, as well as a pencil to trace. Um, tracing paper, which we're going to use to transfer the image. And then last, um, and probably the most important tool, is your gouge. So the gouge is the tool that we're using to get rid of the linoleum or make the relief. Um, there, there are cell sets that come with different blades. So this one is a speedball one that has all the blades right inside. They come out and you can change the size. They do make some where they're um, permanent. And you can have multiple tools. Um, but this one does the function of all of those depending on the size. So those are the things you're going to need. I'm going to walk you through step by step and try to guide you through how to do multiple colors. Um, this is almost identical to an earlier video we have on this channel called Annoying Printing. This one just happens to be a little more advanced um, for those of you who have mastered that one you're looking to challenge yourself a little more. Okay, so the first step after you get your image is going to be to do a tracing. You can also freehand on top of tracing paper if that works easier for you. Or you can also trace right on the linoleum. Um, but I like to do tracing that way when we transfer it, it'll be the reverse image. So you're going to take your pencil, start by just doing a quick outline. And when you're going through, make sure you don't touch any of the pencil because we want the graphite to stay on there because when you transfer it, you have to have the graphite to transfer it onto the linoleum. So usually I start from the top left and sort of work my way down, making sure I get all the areas. Um, you can erase this out if you mess up, but the goal is to try to do as perfect as possible. So when you transfer it over and we thicken up those lines, it'll look just like the image. And you can always edit stuff too. You can add more if you like or take away. And if you do any words, because um, a lot of people comment on that, you're going to want to make sure that you draw them the right way on this tracing paper. And then when you transfer it, it'll come out the opposite way. And then don't freak out about that. That's what's supposed to happen. So as long as you draw them right on here, they'll come out right in the end. All right, so there's the tracing. After you get the tracing, you're going to pull off bring your linoleum over and then you have to flip it. So this is the side that I drew on. I'm now going to flip it to the other side. Make sure it's centered up on your piece of linoleum. And then you're going to apply pressure to the back side using your pencil. So it's actually just about the pressure. You don't have to use a pencil. I use the pencil just because it shows you where you've already pressed down. And it's all about using the right angle. So if you go straight down, it's going to rip through that tracing paper. You can see I'm holding the pencil at an angle. And if you did this the right way, just take a peek before you pull it off completely, it'll transfer right on to the linoleum. And then we're going to go over with the Sharpie. So going over with the Sharpie makes those lines appear thicker and won't smudge um, like the pencil will. I'm thickening up all those lines because we need those thick lines to create the print. All right, then we're going to fast forward. I'm going to show you the next step here. 
Okay, so now that we have all this sharpied in, um, this is what the linoleum should look like um, with the pattern completely done. You're gonna need your bench hook as well as a gouge. Um, these gouges have different blades inside of them. So when you open this up inside, see a couple different blades, they each have a number on the back. So the smaller the number, so this is a one, and they go all the way up to five. So you just look at the back to see what number, and then you can see the size difference on there. So we're gonna start with a three and take all of these and put them back in for safekeeping. This opens up and you're going to slide in the rounded edge so that the blade is sticking out right into the chamber. If this falls apart, which happens, you're gonna see a couple things pop out. These two pieces have to be together and just slide it right back in and tighten it back up. Then you can go ahead and put the blade inside and just keep going until it's nice and tight. So the bench hook is here for protection. So um, when you carve, you wanna place linoleum onto the side hand always behind it or off to the side so that when you press, you're always going away from your body. If you mess up, you'll hit the bench hook right here instead of hitting something or someone else. Uh, make sure you're always going away from yourself and don't curb in, because you don't want to end up slipping. It's also hooked on the bench here so that it doesn't slide across the table, so the pressure will keep it there. Um, I usually rotate this as I go along, and when I hold the gouge, I put it in my palm and wrap my hands around like an ice cream scooper. So if you hold it like a pencil, a lot of times what will happen is the pressure will slide it out. So you hold it from the back side. So we're going to start by removing the background. So we want to keep everything that's Sharpie in the inside. I'm just going to start by slowly going around all these Sharpie lines. Until you make a complete circle around. And after you do one lap, you're then going to start doing a second lap. So inside these smaller areas, you just start right inside the crease. Make sure I'm going away from the ink so that I don't accidentally slip. And get, rid of one of the, get rid of one of those pieces. And when you do this, if you mess up, so a lot of times when you're doing this, there'll be circumstances where you accidentally get rid of some of the Sharpie. Because there's still some left on the inside, I can increase this line and put it back in. But you can only go so far without ruining the image. Even if it's too far of a slip, so I slipped right through all of those lines, I wouldn't be able to repair that. So you can make little small fixes here and there if you need to. So let's pretend I did a full lap around there. I'm going to come around and do the second lap. Just increasing the distance. You can also start in the trench or just go away. You could switch to a bigger blade when you do this as well. All right, so we're going to fast forward to when all this is carved out. Okay, so you can see I've done a couple laps around the whole image. I've also started doing some more. Some people like to carve out every single background and leave some area to grab. So when they print, they can hold it. Um, I usually do about a half an inch um, to a quarter of an inch around. And then using that pathway, start to get rid of all this. So just using scissors. Um, these uh, prints are designed to be front and back. So the linoleum is thick enough that you could technically do another one on the back. So that's another reason why a lot of people just carve out the whole background so they can reuse the other side. We're going to cut close enough that all the Sharpie is still there. And then you're able to at least hold on to a couple portions of these without ruining your print. Um, another thing we have to carve out before we do our first color is anything that's white. So on our image here, you can see the teeth, the nails, and these um, toenails are all going to be white. So that's the next thing we have to get rid of. So in our final print, the white of the paper shows. Um, so depending on your blade size, you may want to switch it. Right now I have a three. I'll probably go to a smaller blade once I get to the tinier nails. I'm just going to be scooping out the nail area. And when all of this is carved out, we're going to start that first print. All right, so I'll finish up these nails. You can go ahead and see what the first print would look like. Okay, so I've carved out um, all the white in the background, so that means we're ready for our first color print. So typically when I do this, black is always the last color I do, and the color that I start with is whatever's lightest. So in this case, it's the skin tone um, peach color. So I'm gonna start by mixing that up. Um, so this is just normal printing ink. This one's water-based. Um, they do make other kinds, but this one washes out. It's usually pretty consistent. I'm gonna start by putting a little of the brown onto a piece of plastic here. I'm going to mix it up with some of the white. And no one's going to see this picture, so I'm not too concerned with matching the color exactly. I'm just going to try to get something similar to it. Start to move these colors around. 
And when you mix the cars, it's sort of a play um, on how much you need to add on each time. So depending on how this comes out, I may have to add more uh, brown or white or even some black. And if I really want to match that car there, I would add some yellow, but this color is fine with me. I'm going to work with this one. You get that first color down, and we're going to go right to our stamp. And if you did this correctly, this color shouldn't show up on any of the background, and it also shouldn't show up on any of those parts that you want to stay white. You want a nice smooth surface. I don't know if on the video you can hear that noise. That's supposed to be a, a consistent sound. It's supposed to have a satin look to it. And then your first print for first color, you're just gonna take the paper, try to center it up, and then rub it on. And you should be able to see the color show up through the other side of the paper here. This is printing paper, but they do, um, a lot of my classes will just use computer paper and it works fine for it. And then you're gonna pull it up so they get a consistent color. Um, typically when I do this, I make about five. So that way, as we add color after color, if something goes wrong, then I should be able to hopefully get one good one out of all five. And that's what I tell my students to do as well. Do a bunch of them, and then, you know, it's better to have too much than not enough. Let's make it and then after you get your five prints, you're going to wash off your stamp. And then we'll fast forward over to the next part. All right, so when you wash this on linoleum, you want to make sure that all the ink is getting off it. So I usually just take my hand and go right across. Just make sure it gets off of every part of it. You don't want this ink to show up when you do your next color. And the really important part about this is that it's really dry. Because if it's not dry, it'll ruin the ink for the next color. So a lot of times water will get trapped in all these little crevices here that you've cut out. So yeah, make sure that you really press the paper towel in and soak up all the water that's in there so that your next print is not gonna be affected by it. And then we're ready to start cutting out the next color. So I'll take you back over to the demo table and I'll show you the next carve out. So now that we've got the first color down, um, we're gonna move to our next darkest color, um, or sorry, lightest color. Normally I would say that's the skin tone, um, this bluish gray here. But because there's such a small area of brown, and since we already used a similar color in brown, I'm gonna go with that. So whatever color we just did, that's what you carve out. So we wanted the nails to be white, the paper was white, so we started with that. The next color you printed was the peach, so now we have to get rid of the peach. And then we're able to print the brown, and then we'll get rid of the brown, and sort of work our way up. So anything that peach now must go. Remember, Sharpie always stays, because that's going to be the black at the very end. So I'm gonna start by just overlapping doing a lap around the sharpie so that I don't accidentally slip and then everything within this area is going to be carved out so I'll switch to a bigger blade for that and then I need to do all in the feet the face um, so we're getting rid of all of the peach because that's the color that we just did so we'll fast forward to this cut out and then I'll show you what the next color print would look like okay so I've cut out um, the peach tone that we just printed and now we're going to be doing the brown in the bottom of the foot here. Uh, so everything is carved out that's going to stay peach and we're just going to do the brown. Now usually when you do another color print you just run it across the whole stamp um, but because I know I only want brown in those one little areas I'm going to save myself some uh, future work just by applying it only to those spots. So I'm just going to put it on to those areas. And now the hard part is actually lining this up correctly. Um, so I flip it over. And again, this is why we have so many prints to try. So you should have five total that you're able to go through and try and line up. And then hopefully, as you go on, they'll all start to line up. So that was a pretty good lineup. You got the brown there. And a lot of this is going to be covered up by that blue or black, so it doesn't matter how really messy it is, as long as you're getting it into that one area. And then it's going to be the same process. So now that we've done um, just the brown, 
We're now going to move into cutting out the brown, followed by the blue, um, grayish blue skin tone. So I'm gonna fast forward to cutting out that brown area. Remember, you gotta wash and dry everything in between, and then we'll be ready for the next color. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've carved out the brown area, as that was the last color that we printed. Um, so now we're gonna be doing the skin tone, and then after that, it'll be the black outline. Um, so the skin in this photo is a bluish gray. So we're gonna be mixing up some blue to start. That'll be our base color. And then to give it a lighter tone, a little bit of white. And then to get the gray color, you need just a touch of black. So a little bit of black in there should create the color. That might even be too much. We'll see what happens with it. Okay, so there's the color we're going for, and we're gonna be applying it on top of everything. So you can see when it's applied, it's not going onto any of the colors that we've done before. So we've got the white of the nail, we've got the skin tone that was used um, in the feet, the chest and the face, and then we got the brown of the paw there. And we're gonna be taking our original print. Remember trying to line it up, which is always the toughest challenge for this. And that's why we have multiples, so we can try. Okay, so that's pretty close. Anytime you get it relatively close to the area, that black outline will take care of the rest for you. We'll do another one, just see if we can get a little closer. And that's one of the nice things actually about printmaking is being able to see that it was made in layers and by hand. You know, if we wanted it to be exactly perfect, then we could just do an illustration or color it in or paint. pretty good. All right, now we're gonna get rid of all of our blue skin tone and we're gonna move on to the black, which is the final color. Um, so we're gonna wash, dry all this, and then I'll show you some of the carving and then the final print. Okay, so I've just finished out carving the majority of this blue skin tone that we just made. And now we're gonna be doing the final color, which is our black. So the black is usually the last. This is that thick outline. And then this will usually hide a lot of mistakes or at least make it dark enough that you can see the whole image. And even if all the colors aren't perfect, it's gonna give it that complete look. So it should only go onto the parts that you had sharpied. Just that original Sharpie design. Almost like a coloring sheet. And again, just trying to get this lined up as best as you can. And that's the final image. You can see the black definitely helped out a lot. Again, it's not always gonna be perfect. Um, we have a couple tries, so we'll try to get one even closer with the other attempts. Um, but this is what they'll look like in the end as you go through each color phase. Um, you could technically keep doing this for an infinite amount of colors. It just becomes a little harder to do as you go because the registration of lining everything up. 
does become pretty difficult with this method. Um, there are ways to register it. Um, there's machines, there's tons of different examples you can find of, of how to register this the right way. Um, but for this by hand one, you just gotta make sure you leave yourself enough attempts that you're going to be able to at least get one good one and sort of limit your colors to what you think you can accomplish. So best of luck and uh, comment below if you have any questions about it and we'll try to answer them for you.